Peaky Blinders Season 6 Review. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on Peaky Blinders Season 6. Now, I don't think I did a review of Season 5, so I am missing Season 5. I will probably do a review on that. I kinda of wanna rank all the seasons, but um, another thing too is I usually do a pro and a cons and a rating, but I'm just gonna shoot straight off the cuff having just watched this season while well, finishing it yesterday. I was actually blown away by the first episode of this season. I was like, man, this might even be in my top three. It was very intense, it was very like emotional, that first episode just blew me away 100%. This season, I'm just very mixed on it. Um, there's a lot of aspects that I did like, a couple of good ideas that I did like, but also, you know, I feel like it kind of misses the mark in other areas. There was a lot of really drawn out scenes in here. And I don't know if that's because we don't have Polly. I think Polly was supposed to be in some episodes of Peaky Blinders season six, but she's literally gone. Maybe some of the scenes were meant to have Polly in there. I'm not sure. Um, and then also, I mean, this is just me personally. There was a whole subplot of Tommy's uh, daughter getting sick. To me, it, it just felt like a big waste of time. Maybe it didn't for you, but I just felt like you know, as soon as I saw it coming, I was like, wow, we're gonna like spend a lot of time on this. It really doesn't even make a lot of sense to the story because she just like randomly gets sick. You know what I mean? It's not like some somebody took her or anything. So we end up spending episodes two and three almost fully just grieving over this daughter, which to me, I just wasn't really invested in. Once episode four, five, and six come around, it does speed up quite a bit and it does get pretty good again. I don't know if it ever gets as good as that first episode, but but it was also interesting that the finale here was like an hour and a half, but at the same time, they left so many things open. Like, it's hard to believe this is supposed to wrap up Peaky Blinders when Tommy lets like multiple bad people just go. That never happens in Peaky Blinders. He always like pretty much gets his guy, except for season five, which I wasn't a big fan of, but I'll be getting into that as well. For some reason, this season felt a little bit deeper than season five. For, for some reason, seasons three and five of Peaky Blinders to me are the most generic and cookie cutter and season six does feel a little bit better. I'm not gonna lie. It does feel a little bit, has like a little bit more heart to it, a little bit more soul, a little bit more flavor, which I did appreciate. And it was just a very, very weird, weird ending. Again, I'm just gonna, I didn't say this before, but I'm going to be doing some spoilers. So you've been spoiled, just letting you know. The ending was just so very weird. You know, in the middle of the season, Tommy gets secretly diagnosed with this kind of cancer that's gonna basically kill him in a year. Tommy pretty much doesn't tell anybody he kind of pretty much gets ready to kill himself because apparently this cancer or something is going to render him completely useless and he's going to have need to have all of his family around him to basically help him and he doesn't want that so he's going to pre pretty much just go kill himself once all the stuff is done all of his deeds are done so he kind of goes out there and then in the last like 10 or 15 minutes at least from what i remember he gets an epiphany from his daughter to look at the newspaper and then he finds out that his doctor was like a fake doctor trying to tell him that he's sick when he's not actually sick. So then he goes and kills the doctor. He comes back to his carriage where they're gonna burn for him. This is like him dying. He catches it on fire. He's like, oh, somebody already burned all my shit up. And then he's like, oh, well, I'll just like, and he just rides off into the distance. And like, it was interesting because you get Tommy still alive. It returns him to his gypsy life. He's like pretty much dead to everybody. He he blew up his house. So he's really just re completely returned to his roots as a gypsy. And at the same time, he doesn't die. So it kind of has this story that keeps going. But the only things I didn't like was that they left like two main characters alive. And one of them, Oswald Mosley, I don't really mind him that much, but he's got to be the worst villain of all the Peaky Blinders. I'm not gonna lie. Like every single one was more intimidating. Like Sam Neill, you had the preacher from number three, who in my opinion is the worst. Like they got me to hate the preacher the most out of anybody. Adrian Brody was way better than Oswald Mosley. And he gets left alive here, you know? And then Michael's wife, she's just acts terribly and behaves terribly and is pretty much asking to get killed in here. Nothing happens to her. She ends up cheating on Michael. Michael never finds out. It's like, bro, you guys just messed this whole drama up. You could have just eaten this up all day and you guys didn't, you know? Michael's wife's uncle 
was a terrible bad guy, a total player. He comes in. I mean, I think that they ended up doing the deal with the other people, so that guy technically got screwed, but he's alive. He's big evil. You got to take him out. You know what I mean? And the main thing that I remember negatively about this season was just the really drawn out scenes. Like you'd see a scene that really doesn't take more than three or four minutes to like explain it and it ends up taking like 10 to 12. And it's just like somebody just like, oh, life's so hard. Let me have a cigarette and a drink. And it's like, okay, I can deal with that but it's like you got to give me a little bit more substance there so this season overall was pretty good I was a little hot and cold with it I really wish they did something else besides the daughter angle because it just to me was just filling up two episodes and I don't know I just didn't really fit as well as it could have but overall this season was very very watchable every season of Peaky Blinders I end up being like you know even though I don't like this there's certain things I really don't like that they did that they did good in other ones I could still watch Peaky Blinders and for some reason Peaky Blinders just puts me in, a, in the right state of mind you know and I was watching Dexter recently and I remember Dexter being one of my favorite shows and Dexter just gets me all up in my feelings all the time it gets me just thinking about himself because like Dexter's like a serial killer so he's always just got something going in his head just playing in his head and it's all about Dexter all the time which is like cool but like when I watch it it just I, I you know what I mean I don't want to be caught up in myself I want to be able to go out and socialize and stuff and Dexter kind of puts me in a box but anyways guys that's been my review of Peaky Blinders season six definitely near the bottom but like I said Peaky Blinders is so freaking good that I wouldn't mind watching the worst season so anyways guys let me know what you think of Peaky Blinders season six won the road of 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys help you guys are the best I'm having a great day out here hopefully having a great day at home see you all in the next video peace